Hello, hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, teacher. How, How are you I today? Teacher? I am doing great. Very happy to be here. Very ah, happy good. to see you. Uh, me too. Thank you very much. Okay. Let me just close here. How was your day, ladies? Uh, my day is very tired, but I am happy. Okay. It was tiring, <laughs> but you are happy. Right? Ay, when yeah. you say it was tiring. Tiring, it means like it was agotador, cansado, right? Uh, okay. Tiring, tiring. Tiring, yes. Because if you tiring. say, my day was tired, el día, mi día estuvo cansado, pero el día era el que se sentía cansado. So, so I feel tired. You can say, me siento cansado. I feel tired or the day was tiring. You can use either way. Let's see, Patty. Is your Hello. audio working? Hey, your, yes. audio, your audio is working today. That's so nice. I am yes, very happy you. for that. <laughs> yeah, Thank yesterday, you. yesterday, I don't know what happened, but many students had difficulties with, with the audio, with the connection, with many things, and it was very strange. So, but I am happy that it works today. Hello, Carlos Fernando, how are you today? Hello, teacher. Uh, um, I'm going to say, uh, uh, what about you? I am doing great. I am very happy to be here. I am always waiting for the eight o'clock class. <laughs> I really like to come and teach and to be with you. So thank you for asking, Carlos. Hello, Avi. Hello, Marbelli. Hello, Ana Julia. Welcome to your class. Today, we are going to work a little bit on passive voice. We are going to work a little bit on uh, structures of passive voice with simple past, right? The ones that we made the introduction yesterday. And uh, if you had the chance to read a little bit about this, then you are going to know what the topic is going to be about, okay? So uh, that is basically what we are going to do today, to work on passive voice. Good evening. Hello, good evening, Byron. How are you? I am good. Excellent. Welcome. Did you, did you have the chance to see the exercise that I sent you on the WhatsApp group? No? Tuvieron el chance de ver el ejercicio que les envié en el grupo de WhatsApp? Nobody? O han dejado el grupo olvidado por ahí bloqueado en algún lado. Ajá, ajá, ajá. No one. Yes, the, the, eh, el enlace. Yes, the, the little game that I sent you on, on WhatsApp. Sí, um, le di una revisadita así como dicen abuelo de ojo, pero no. <laughs> Okay, the idea is that, well, with that, you can practice a little bit of passive voice. You can create sentences with passive voice, and you have to choose the past tense verb and the verb in the uh, past participle form. So that is something that you need to check. So if you can have the opportunity to do it a little bit later, please uh, go and check it, okay? Go and check it out. It is, a, it is like a short activity. I think it has like seven sentences for you to work on them. Uh, so if you can do it, uh, please do it later on. Maybe after the class, it's going to be a little bit easier for you to check it out because it is not, it is not really difficult. You just have to click on the, on the answers and then you go and, and, and get them, right? So welcome everybody. Now that most of you are connected, we are going to start working. Remember on the calendar of activities that I shared with you on the first class two days ago, we were working and 
I was mentioning that you have to start working on the platform as soon as possible, right? And many of you have already entered. I was checking if you were working on the platform and I saw many of you working. Remember that according to the platform, we are going to work on sections one and two this week, right? Today and tomorrow. So you can have it ready for Friday. In the uh, platform, and I wanted to go there and check, right? In the platform, you have different exercises, but in sections one and two, I think you have only six different, uh, six or two exercises, I guess. So if you go there to the platform, and it's what I am showing you right now, if you go to the platform, you should have completed the first uh, two sections of it, okay? I don't know if you did it already. ¿Quién ya tuvo el chance de trabajar las primeras dos secciones de la plataforma? Raise your hand. Uh, okay. Yo estoy a la okay. mitad de la segunda. De la oh. segunda. Okay, very good. We are going to work on that. Norma, Byron, very good. So, it is, it is nice. Teacher. <laughs> very good. You finish everything. No, la una, teacher, la I am finished. <laughs> okay, good. Very good. Okay. Musicón activado ahí. <laughs> okay, good. So if you have finished the first two sections, that's perfect because that is what people from Insafor are going to check on Friday, right? That you have advanced at least on those exercises, right? Here on the first section of the platform, you have three exercises. The first exercise is about a multiple choice, right? In this one, we were working these little exercises yesterday on the book, right? As you remember, on the manual, we were working and we were talking about the different things and examples like this one. The Great Wall of China was begun in 214 before Christ, right? The Coliseum was open, right? With the verb in past and the past participle. So if we go here, to the exercises on the platform, we have the kiss. And say, was composed, was painted, was written, was directed, or was recorded. In this case, if you don't know what the kiss is, you can say, the song yesterday, it's something that we know, and you can start with that, okay? Cuando se les presenten ejercicios como este, por ejemplo, ustedes se van por lo primero, por lo que más conocen, right? In this case, the song yesterday, you say, like, ah, I know this one. You say, the song yesterday, what is the best option for this one? It is a song. So was it should be. By the Beatles. Was recorded, right? Was recorded because we are talking about a song. What do you do with the songs? You record them, right? The song yesterday was recorded. Here you have the verb in past. And then here you have the auxiliary, sorry, in past and the verb in the past participle. And then you have by, and after by, you are going to have the doer of the action, right? You are talking about the song, the song yesterday. But what is important about the song was recorded by the Beatles. In a normal sentence, you are going to say, the Beatles recorded the song yesterday. Okay, that's a normal form sentence, right? The Beatles recorded the song yesterday. But in a passive voice, if you want to say, fue grabada por, right? The song yesterday was recorded by the Beatles. If I say, for example, eh, Atol de Lote, who wrote, the, who recorded the song Atol de Lote? Let's see how Salvadorian you are. Uh-huh. Vamos a ver qué tan salvadoreño Marito son. Marito Rivera. Yo sé Lora. <ríe> ok. ¿Quién da más? ¿Quién da más? Who wrote eh, Moviendo la Tol de Lote? Who recorded that one? Ajá. Uh -huh. Was recorded by... Was recorded by... By whom? Tengo Yo sé Lora. By Jose Lora, right? The song Atol de Lote was recorded by Jose Lora. Good, very good. So if you have, for example, a, 
the song, let me see. Let me see another famous song that we have. Let's see. Uh, well, one from, from this very famous person, right? Ay, my goodness, I forgot the name. It's a very famous Salvadorian singer. It is, give me one name of a Salvadorian singer. Chan, 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 Alberto, what? I don't remember the name. <laughs> Alvaro Armando Torres. Alvaro Torres y Armando Manzanero. Sorry. You see, I, I am not so Salvadorian, I can say. <laughs> Yo era la que no soy Salvadoreña. So, if I say, Patria Querida, who, who recorded that one? It was recorded by Alvaro Torres. Very good job, right? It was recorded by Alvaro Torres. Excellent. So it is the same here, right? The, the film Schindler's List. Who created that one? The film Schindler's well, directed List. Directed by Steven Spielberg. Was directed by Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg. Very good. The novel Pride and Prejudice. Uh huh. The novel Pride and Prejudice was written by Jane Austen. Was written why? Was, written. was written by Jane Austen, right? And it's a very beautiful book. The opera Carmen. The opera Carmen. Uh -huh. We have was recorded, was directed, was written, was. Can you paint an opera? Yes or no? You have was composed. I think my internet is very bad today. Let's see. Hello. Let's... I am back. You say like, yay, no class. No, I am here. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what happened with my internet connection. It was very bad. Well, I am here. I am back. Can you listen to me? Yes. Yes. Okay, good, very good. Let me see here. Okay, let's continue here. We were working about the opera and you say like the opera Carmen was composed by George Bisset, right? And the last one that we have, that is the first one in this case, we have a, oh my goodness, here. I am going to move it here. The first option that we didn't complete, the kiss was painted by Gustav Klimt. Gustav Klimt. Right, the kiss, it's a very famous painting. And in this case, as you can see the structure here, the kiss was painted by, right? The song yesterday was recorded by, Right, the film Schindler's List was directed by. That is the, the same structure that they that they have there. The book Cuentos de Barro was written by Fredo Espino. Very good. What about Hicaras Tristes? Alfredo Espino. Alfredo Espino as well. Very good. So give me one example, people. Create one example about something that you know using the structure of the sentences that we have here. Invent one example about something that you know, something famous. The novel El Dinero Maldito uh -huh. was written by Alberto Masferrer. Very good, was written by, was written 
written, written. written by. Very good, Oscar Eduardo. Excellent example. Another example, a song, a movie. <laughs> any other one who wants to give me an example? Using a song, a movie, a game, a video game. The book it uh, uh -huh. was written by uh, by <laughs> we, we, we forgot it. We forgot. I it. don't remember. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Try to create another example. What about uh, the movie Titanic? Was stared by who was the star of the movie Titanic? Leonardo DiCaprio. Exactly like that, right? The movie Titanic was stared by Leonardo DiCaprio. Let's see. The song Thriller was sung by Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. Michael Jackson, right? There you have an example. Create one. I need you to create one example. Ya le di un ejemplo yo. Armen un original. Think about one. Think about your favorite song. Think about uh, your favorite movie, your favorite book. The song Waka Waka was <laughs> recorded by Shakira. <laughs> Very good. The song Waka Waka was recorded by Shakira, right? Very famous Shakira nowadays. Okay, excellent example. Create another one. I need you to create another one. Think about one. Look at this ones that we have here. Okay. So based on this example, this was our first part of the exercise. Then you have the second exercise here is for you to create the sentences, right? And in this case, you have to use the, the verb and the past participle part in the sentence, right? And these are the only two things that you need to add. Esas son las únicas dos cosas que tenemos que agregar. So in this case, we have normal sentences, right? This is a simple present, passive. The previous examples, right? This one, these examples that we had here, were we using present or past? In these ones, were we using present or past? Past. Past. past, right? We were using past. So if we go to the next examples that we have in the platform, the second part here, are with simple present passive, right? And what, how we create them. And it's like many crops are grown, right? And I'm going to write it in capitals for you to see it, right? But it's not correct. Many crops are grown in Taiwan. How would you translate this one into Spanish? ¿Cómo lo pasaríamos al español? Esta forma de pasivo. Many crops are grown in Taiwan. Think about it. How, how will it be? ¿Cómo lo traducirían? I have a question. Uh -huh. What are crops? Crops son eh, todos los cultivos. Those are crops, cultivos. Estaban creciendo. <laughs> a little bit. Many crops are grown in Taiwan. Están creciendo. Cultivados. Son cultivados. Son cultivados, cultivados. Right? You cannot say son crecidos, right? <laughs> you cannot say muchos cultivos son crecidos in, in Taiwan. So like muchos cultivos son cultivados in Taiwan or muchos productos Son cultivados en Taiwan. So here we have some crops are consumed locally. Algunos cultivos son consumidos localmente. So that will be the form of these sentences. But as you can see here, you have the simple uh, present form of the verb and the past participle form of, uh, we have the simple present auxiliary and the past participle form in the main verb, okay? So what about this one? You have export as the main verb. 
and you are talking about crops. It's plural. So it says other crops are, are exported. exported. Right? Are exported. Otros cultivos son exportados. exportados. Right? In the next one, you have rice. Is it singular or plural? Singular. Rice. rice is singular, uncountable, because you cannot make it plural. Tú no okay. puedes decir raíces. Okay, por ejemplo. okay. So that is singular and... Rice is cultivated in warmer parts. Very good. So you say rice is cultivated, right? Is cultivated. Singular and past participle. A wide variety of seafood. Seafood. What is the meaning of that? What is like, seafood? Like fish, like shell. Exactly. Like mariscos. Mariscos. That is mariscos, right? That's don't seafood. Use Spanish. Don't yeah. Use it. <laughs> it's all the food from the sea. Seafood, <laughs> fish, shrimp, snails, uh, squid, Chill. all this, all these things. Dream. This is singular or plural? Plural. Uh -huh. Singular. Seafood singular. is singular, singular. Uncountable because you are talking about okay. the group of food. Okay. Seafood is, what is the past participle of catch? Catch. Catch. Oh. Catch it? Cut, cut. 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 I am going to send you back to the list of verbs, right? You see, a wide variety of seafood is caught. It's caught. Okay, it's the one that they get on the ocean, right? Many people is employed in electronic and textile industries. People, singular or plural? Plural. Plural, plural, right? People, it's plural. Are, because you are talking about a group of people. Many people are, are employed. 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 Right? Many people are employed in the electronic and textile uh, textile mm -hmm. industries. French and English. I just spoke. Are. are. What is the past participle uh, form of a spoke? Are spoken. Spoken, spoken. right? Spoken. Are spoken. spoken. And the U.S. The U.S. in general, the country. Singular or plural? It's singular. 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 What is the form of the verb? Made, Made up. up. Made up. <laughs> is made up. up. Made up. up of 50 states. A lot of sheep. Sheep, singular or plural? Plural. 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 Sheep. Right. Sheep, well, in this case, when you say a lot of sheep, you are talking about the group of animals. In this case, so we say, sheep can be the same in singular and in plural, right? are raised in New Zealand. In this case, it's plural, are raised. Cars and computers. Are. 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 In this case, are. If there is a mistake here. Yes. Are. Manufactured. Are manufactured in Korea, right? Are manufactured in Korea. And here you have, and you just click it there and you are going to check it out, right? Only the verb, the auxiliary and the verb. And this is the second example of the first part. And the last example that you have in the first section, it's a reading about the museums. In this one, you have to read the reading. We're going to do it right now. Okay. There we go. We're going to read the reading. Sorry that I silent because I, I have echo. And we have three different museums. Do you remember the type of museums we have there? We have the Kimchi Museum, the Museum of Gold, 
and the Chocolate Museum. If you had the opportunity to go to any of these three museums, which one will you go to? We have the Kimchi Museum, the Museum of Gold, and the Chocolate Museum. The Museum of Gold, both. The Museum of Gold, which one will you go? Okay, Oscar says to the Museum of Gold. What about yes. the rest? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you don't feel attracted to the other no, ones? No, no, no. Okay, my other students, which museum would you visit? The chocolate museum. The chocolate museum. Any other one? Will any of you go to the kimchi museum? Hi, teacher. Okay. I like the kimchi museum. Oh, you will go to the kimchi museum. Nice. <laughs> it is curious when you realize what it is kimchi, right? Because in some cases we, we didn't even know what kimchi was. But here we're going to read it a little bit, right? I think I can make this one. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Okay, the Kimchi Museum. If not, I'm going to open it here in my menu. Okay. Here I have it. Let's read about the museums and then we are going to go and answer the questions. And then we're going to do these exercises that I have here. Let's see, Hi, I have a different reading here. Let's, yeah, I have a different reading here on this one. Well, let's go back here. The Kimchi Museum, it says, if you don't know about kimchi, a trip to the Kimchi Museum is an eye-opening experience. What is an eye-opening experience? It is something that you will be wondered about. You see like, wow, right? That's an eye-opening experience. The museum was founded in 1986 to highlight Korea's rich kimchi culture. The exhibit includes displays of cooking utensils and materials related to making, storing, and eating the famous pickled vegetables. The museum also provides details about the history and nutritional benefits of, of Korea's most beloved side dish, the kimchi. Finally, a stop by the souvenir shop to try various types of kimchi. So in this case, it is about Korean food. What about the Museum of Gold in Bogota, Colombia? Let's see. If you want to see beautiful objects, the Museum of Gold is the place. It holds one of South America's most stunning collections. Do you know what is the meaning of stunning? What's the meaning of stunning? It's like impresionante. Yes. Yeah, stunning. It's like impressive, marvelous. Because the exhibits sparkle so brightly. What is the meaning of a sparkle? So brightly. Like shiny. Exactly, shine, right? You can actually take photographs without using a flash on your camera. Not everything is made of gold though. Among the exhibits are ancient pre-Columbian items. Many of them are made from a mixture of gold and copper, known as tumbago, right? And the last one, we have the Chocolate Museum. Elmer, can you help me to read the Chocolate Museum? I don't like chocolate, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can help me to read. <laughs> Come on. Like, okay. no, no, teacher, I don't like chocolate. <laughs> Go ahead. The chocolate, chocolate museum will teach you everything about chocolate from co cocoa, bean to candy bar, 
you'll learn about chocolate. Uh, 3,000. 3,000 year, years history and discovery how it was one use and money in South America, a real chocolate factory. Show you how chocolate is made. After you finish the tour, you can sample a complimentary drink of rich. Gooey. Gooey poor chocolate, perfect for those which a sweet tooth. Okay. Perfect for those with a sweet tooth. What is the meaning of gooey? Uh -huh. Who investigated that one? ¿Quién fue curioso y me investigó que era gooey? Como pegajoso, eh? Gooey, right? It's like viscoso, pegajoso, right? Espeso. That's the meaning of gooey, right? A nice, rich, gooey, pure chocolate. Right, perfect for those with a sweet tooth. With a sweet tooth, it means that you like sweet things, right? That is the meaning of sweet tooth. 3,000 year history and discover how it was used as money in South America, right? We used to use it as, as money as well, the chocolate. In this one, when you go off the beaten path, what do you think it means, this phrase? When you go off the beaten path, you do something unusual or you go somewhere far away? Do something unusual. Aha, uh -huh. do something unusual. What is the meaning of beaten path? El sendero marcado. When you go off the beaten path, you do something unusual. The next one that we have here, the next phrase that we have in the exercise. When something is founded, it is started, started. or discovered? Started. started, very good. What about the next one? Here we have, when something is stunning, is extremely? Attractive. Attractive. In which other cases you can use stunning? Here we use it for the gold, right? That it, it was stunning. In which other cases you can use stunning? What other thing you can, can be? Someone, you can tell someone they look stunning. Okay, that they look stunning, right? For example, a lady or a boy, right? You say, hey, you look stunning. Wow, you look fantastic. And it means that they look attractive, that they look nice. When something is ancient, it is? Very old. Very old. It's very old, very right? Very old. Don't use that with people. It, it can be used with the ancient, the Mayans and everything, but don't say, ah, my grandmother, she's ancient. No, <laughs> don't do it like that because it's kind of offensive. Ancient, it can be about an object. It can be about people who are not in this world anymore, right? My ancestors, you can say. They are really ancient. When something is complimentary, it is? Free of charge. Free of charge or very expensive? Free of charge. Free of charge, right? When something is complimentary, it's free of charge. Like if you buy a shampoo and then you get the conditioner and it's free of charge, it's complimentary. When something is gooey, it is light and refreshing or thick and sticky? Thick and sticky. Thick and sticky, right? Thick and sticky, like the chocolate, right? Like the chocolate that is thick and sticky. Very good. So that is the form, right? That is the form of the reading in the second section of the platform. Was it difficult to make the exercises? Now with help, it is not. 
In part number two, that is the second one that you should complete, you can find it right here. Here you also have three exercises, right? You have three exercises to complete in this second part. And for sure, in this one, we are going to use past participle and we're going to use a past and present continuous, right? In this case, we have my brother snowboard when he's like, something was happening when another thing actually interrupted the action or it caused a situation. You say, my brother was snowboarding, right? Andaba esquiando, when he... Bro broke. Broken. When he broke, right? In this case, you have past participle, uh, and you have in the other one, you have press, uh, past continuous, right? My brother was snowing when he broke, right? Simple past, broke. sorry. Here you have continuous and past. My brother was snowboarding, estaba esquiando, when he fell down and broke his leg in many pieces. In this case, you have this exercise done. Several years ago, I, several years ago, I was, was found, was, was having, was having, I was having problems with math. So I, what is the past tense? Found, found right? Found. So I found a tutor, a tutor to help me, right? I found a tutor to help me. I was having problems with math, so I found a tutor to help me. In this case, we have continuous and past. Past continuous and simple past. The couple, you cannot say was having in this case. In this case, you have <laughs> simple past at the beginning. The couple have, this is the simple past had. form, their first child when they we're, we're living. We're living, right? In a tiny apartment, right? You cannot say the couple was having their first child when they were living in a tiny apartment, right? Porque como que estuvieran haciendo el niño cuando estaban en el apartamento. It's not logical, right? The couple had their first child when they were living in a tiny apartment. And sentence number four, you have while in Ireland a few years driving. ago was driving very good in ireland a few years ago i drove the verb is realized realized okay realized. i realized i was realized. on the wrong side of the road right while i was driving while i was driving mientras mientras manejaba mientras estaba manejando in ireland a few years ago I realized I was on the wrong side of the road. It was like, oh my God, and you change, right? Ulrich, a good book, but someone, the ending. Ulrich was yeah, reading. Was, was reading. reading. <laughs> this was the action that was happening, right? He was reading a good book, but someone told, told, told her told. the ending. Sorry for her, she didn't enjoy it, right? Someone told her the ending. While my mother her was mi mama, cooking, uh -huh, was cooking dinner last night, the phone rang. rang. Rang, right? The phone rang. Very good. While my mother was cooking dinner last night, the phone rang not one, three times. Ren, 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 ren. The next one, we have Tracy and Eric when they at the same restaurant. Met. They met, met. exactly. Met. Tracy and met. Eric met when they when were, 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 were working, working at the same restaurant, right? In Vancouver. Ellos se conocieron cuando estaban trabajando. And so that's the first exercise of part number two. What about the next ones? And why am I working on these ones with you? 
Later in the classes during this week and the next one, I will explain the topics in detail, but you need to have the platform ready for tomorrow. Okay, so that's important. Ya mañana y los otros días de clase les voy explicando más en detalle los temas, pero su plataforma ya la tienen completada. So that's the, like the preview of everything. That's why I am explaining you this. And you don't have problems with the platform. The next one. In this case, it says, complete the conversations with present continuous forms. And you don't need to select, you need to select two choices, right? Remember that in this one, we need to have two answers. In this one, what you do lately? ¿Qué has estado haciendo? Present perfect continuous. What have, have you, you have been, been doing? doing? What have you been doing lately? ¿Qué has estado haciendo? Right? What have you been doing lately? Well, I my free time at the beach. I have been spending. I have been spending my free time at the beach. He estado pasando, right? You part time this year? Have you been have, working? Have you been working? Have you been, been working, working part time this year? Has estado trabajando? Have you been working part time? Yes, I. I have. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I have. I have been making. Have been I making. have been making I drinks been making. at the coffee time for the past few months. I have been making. Right, estaba haciendo. How? How, 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 how have you how been, have feeling? Have been have, feeling? How have you been feeling recently? ¿Cómo te has estado sintiendo últimamente? How have you been feeling recently? Say, great, I... I've been getting... Been getting. I have been getting a lot of sleep. And I... Haven't been, haven't been eating. Been eating. I haven't been eating as much since I start, started my diet, right? I haven't been eating. No he estado comiendo. I haven't been eating as much, right? That's the, the beginning of the diet. It's always like that, right? The next one. Uh, had you been getting have enough you? exercise lately? Ha have you, have been? you been getting enough exercise lately, right? Have you been getting enough exercise lately? And the next one, it says like, no, I, I haven't. Haven't. I haven't. I been have been studying. I have been studying a lot for a big exam, right? I have been studying, right? Remember, it has the Y in the middle. I have been studying a lot for my exams. Oh, and this one, I think it's like, uh, yeah, but it was correct. Have you? Oh, sorry, <laughs> I got the, sorry, it was my bad. I got the click on the incorrect one. Le di click a la que no era. Sorry. So that can happen to you. <laughs> Eso le puede pasar a ustedes. It was with double T. Sorry, I was just passing the exercises. You see, I always, may, I always recheck. And it happens to you. You have to check that you have all the exercises done and complete. And the last exercise for part number two, it's a reading, right? But this one, you can do it on your own, okay? I am going to allow you to do this one on your own if you haven't finished, because it is a little bit longer, right? We're going to practice the reading later. If you have finished this one, do you remember, do you remember how do other musicians describe Sara? Vamos a ver quién ya terminó este ejercicio. How do other musicians describe Sara? Do you remember that one? Yes. The, most the most wonderful. wonderful perfect. The most wonderful. The most wonderful and perfect violinist, right? Because Sara was a violinist. Who gave Sara her first violin? Do you remember that one? Her, her father. father. Her father. Her, her father. Father. We were going to see. 
Where did Sarah go to school? Do you remember that one? The first one. <laughs> the first one. Julia's School of Music. Let's see. Yes. We are going to make a quick review here. Julia's School of Music in New York. Yes. And what did the doctors tell Michael's parents? He might have learning difficulties. He might have learning difficulties, right? Because he was he was kind of uh, distracted easily, right? There you go. It was about, about Michael. He might have learning difficulties, they say, and he was very intelligent. Whose work has Alejandra's been compared to? How do you say pronunciation Picasso? Uh, how do you pronounce? How do you yeah. pronounce? How do you pronounce Picasso? It's the same. Picasso. Picasso. Ah, okay. It, it's being compared to Picasso, right? And there you have. This is about the reading that we have. So please, if you hadn't complete the platform, there you have the first two sections for you to do that. Okay. Now we cover everything. And if you have any difficulty with any of the exercises, just go back to the video of the class and you are going to remember it. Remember that uh, it should be done by tomorrow. So if you haven't finished, please complete it today or during the day tomorrow, okay? So we are done with that part of the platform. I am going to call the attendance before everything happens, right? Let me just stop sharing for a moment. I am going to call the attendance and we are going to continue with a little exercise on passive voice. Uh-huh. So here I go. Now it is done. El que no había terminado, hoy sí puede terminar. You can finish today. And here I am. Remember, when you listen to your name, say here or present. There we go. Ana Julia? Present teacher. Byron Rafael? Present teacher. Brian Eduardo. Carlos Fernando. Present. Thank you. Cristina Vigail. Present. Damaris Merari. Present teacher. Daisy Magdalena. Present teacher. Elizabeth del Carmen. Present teacher. Elmer Mauricio. Present teacher. Elvia Sofía. Present. Emma Jamilet. Present teacher. Giselle Cecilia. Giselle. We're missing Giselle today. Iris Rosario. Present teacher. Manuel Alejandro. Hi teacher. Thank you. Marbelli Jocelyn. Present teacher. Marlon Ernesto. Present teacher. Natalie Geraldine. Here. Thank you. Uh, let me see. I go with Nelson Rolando. Present. Oscar Eduardo. Present teacher. Pablo Reyes. Mr. Pablo. Pablito. Patricia Verónica. Present teacher. Thank you. René David. Present teacher. Thank you. Sandra Yanet. I'm here teacher. Sara María. Sarita. Ah, your microphone, Sarita. Thank you. And Saúl Arnulfo. Present teacher, I'm here. Thank you very much. Okay, so I am just missing Giselle. Giselle, Giselle. And let me see. Only Giselle and Brian Eduardo. I am missing Brian today. Okay, so let's go back here, my dear class. We are going to do a little exercise here. Let me just share my screen back with all of you. 
Okay, here we go. According to the exercises that we have been doing, here we have a couple of exercises about passive voice. And we have Egyptians built the pyramids thousands of years ago. And here we have the passive form. The pyramids were built thousands of years ago. What about the next one? You say like, did Thomas Edison invent the light bulb in 1879? How could we transform this one into passive voice? How would you make it? If we have to use was at the beginning. Uh, the light bulb was invented by Thomas Edison in 1879. Remember that if it is a question, we are going to use was at the beginning. So we say was, was what? What the are we talking bulb? about? Aha, uh -huh. was the light bulb? What is the main verb? Invent. Invent. How do you use that Invent. one? Invent. How do you use that one in past participle? Invented. 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 Was the light bulb invented by whom? By Thomas Edison. By Thomas Edison. In which year? In 1879. In 1879? And then you have yes. the form. Was the light bulb invented by Thomas Edison in 1879? Okay. What about this one? Clyde Tombaugh discovered Pluto in 1930. Pluto was discovered uh -huh. in 1930. Pluto was discovered by whom? Who did it? ¿Quién lo hizo? By, by Clyde, Clyde Tombow. Okay, very good. Tombow. Oh, it's G H. In in nineteen thirty. Nineteen thirty. And there you have the form. It is a little bit complicated, but then when once you read it, analyze, and transform, it's a little bit easier. What about the next one? Let's go with the next one here. The Chinese first used paper money over a thousand years ago. Analyze the sentence. Analyze the sentence and you have the Chinese first paper used paper money. money. Was uh -huh. used paper. Okay. Over a thousand years ago. Okay, we have the main thing that we are talking about. It is paper money, right? Paper money was used over a thousand years ago. Was used over a thousand years ago. By the Chinese. Very good. Excellent. By the Chinese. Okay, and there you have the sentence. Paper money was used over a thousand years ago by the Chinese. There you have the sentence. Let's go with the next one. What are we talking about? ¿De qué estamos hablando? What is the main thing that we are talking about? iPad. The iPad. iPad. The iPad. Who is the doer the of iPad. the action? Who is the doer? Steve Jobs. Steve, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. And the year? 1986. 1986. 1986. So in this case, if we are going to make it in, uh, the iPad. let's see, the iPad was the iPad wasn't the iPad. introduced. Exactly, but because we are using the, job in the negative. 1986. So you say the iPad, right? 
That's what we're talking about. The iPad wasn't, right? Wasn't introduced by Steve Jobs in 1986. Sorry? Está escribiendo porque no ve. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yes, I was writing on the The iPad wasn't introduced by Steve, by Jobs. Steve Jobs. In okay. 1986. Lo, lo voy a bajar un poquito. There you go. By Steve Jobs. And in 1986. Okay, and there you have the period, right? The iPad wasn't introduced by Steve Jobs in 1986. What about the next one? The next one. When did Carl <laughs> Benz invent the first real car? The first real first car was invented by Carl Benz. The first real car was invented by Carl Benz. Yes, but how will you make how will you make the form of the question? Was was when was when was exactly when was because in this case we have an extra word. In this case is the wh word that it's when right and in this one for sure we need to keep it right when <coughs> and then we have the past tense the past uh, the auxiliary when was what invented the first real car invented the first real car when was invented the first uh -huh. Invented the first real car by Carl Benz. Okay, let's write it. When was the first real, real car, car by... invented? So you say, when was the first real car invented? In this case, that's the, pass the passive form of the sentence. When was the first real car invented? Or you say, when, uh, when was, well, in this case, we don't need to use the doer, right? Because it won't be, it won't have any sense. It won't have any sense to add the person in the sentence. When was the first real car invented? Because on the answer, you are going to have a date. Cuando tengamos la respuesta, nos van a dar una fecha, right? You don't really need the doer of the action in this example, right? In this specific example, you don't need the doer of the action. Let's go with the next one. People watch the first TV in the 1920s. The first TV was... What? The first TV... What? Was watched... Uh huh. When? By people. Do you really need to use people here? Because no. we know that people watch TV, right? No. So you the say first. the first TV was the what? The first TV by people. You don't need to use by people, right? Because we know that oh. we watch TV, right? The first TV. I'm going to was, write it down was, here. Was washed in the 1980s. Was 1920s. 1920s. 1920s, right? The first TV was watched Watch. in, in the 19, 1920s. 1920s. Okay, you don't have to say by people because we know that we are the ones who watch TV, right? The first TV was watched in the 1920s. And the last exercise that I have for you today, number eight. People made the first McDonald's burger in 1955. The first McDonald's. The first McDonald's hamburger. In 1955. Okay, the first McDonald's hamburger was made. Made. In, in 1955. 55, right? The first McDonald's hamburger was made in 19, 
1955. Sorry that I added a U there. The first McDonald's hamburger was made in 1955. So these are a couple of examples of passive voice. I chose the most difficult ones for you. But here on the book, you have other types of exercises. If you see here, si se van al libro, tenemos otros ejercicios un poquito más sencillos. So you can work on these ones. Right, you can work on these exercises that we have here and you can do the matching, right? Here you have an exercise for matching that is exactly the same that we have in the platform, right? Here, the only thing that you need to do is to match, right? The Mona Lisa was painted by Leonardo, Leonardo da, Vinci. da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. La, the opera, the novel, the film E.T. and the album Thriller. And then here you have it, but here I have five sentences for you to practice for tomorrow. And here you have the exercise that you are going to make. With these five exercises, I need you to write them on your notebook and write the passive form of them. Thomas Edison invented the phonograph in 1877, right? The phonograph was invented by Thomas Edison in 1877 on your notebook, okay? For tomorrow. Practice with these five exercises that are on the book and have them ready for the class. Okay, my dear students, that's all for today. I am going to see you tomorrow. Yes, Saul? Uh, where do I find this book? It's on the platform. If you go to the platform, it's on the top of it. On the top of it, here you have a student's manual and you can find it right here, exactly here. Okay. En la plataforma, en las opciones. There you can find okay, it. Thank you. You're welcome. So my dear students, work on these exercises for tomorrow and we're going to keep working on passive voice and we're going to explain a little bit more about the topic. Have a wonderful night and I'm going to see you tomorrow, my dear class, for another Take care, learning teacher. moment. Bye-bye. Tomorrow, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care, bye-bye.